everybody, pretty much everybody knows that, that a 6.0 um, has one test the power of a 7.0, and an 8.0 is 10 times a 7.0, and a 9.0 is 10 times an 8.0. In real life, this chart shows you what that actually represents. Plus, so I want to the... add in there that uh, they have changed the Richter scale and knocked it back one. So a 9.0 nowadays would actually have been a 10.0 on the old scale. Okay, you know, I wasn't aware of that. But it, you it know, just shows I how big a 9.0 I, I, is. It just shows how big yeah, a 9.0 yeah, is. I, you know, I, I didn't care about earthquakes or anything, and I just applied engineering and math to do this chart, and engineering right. and math to do all this all this, this study. Um, if, if you look here, you know, the San Francisco quake is all the way down here at the bottom. It's like it's like 15 pixels off the bottom. If you, if you scroll up, you can get to, uh, you know, uh, you know, a little bit off the bottom, we get to the great uh, 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 Tokyo earthquake that happened in 1923 that just scared Japan so bad and, and just trashed Tokyo, and they and they uh, they upgraded all their all their buildings over it. If you go up further, 8.4 is Sarabamba. That's the if you detonated the biggest nuke detonated, it would be an 8.4 if you did it underground. Um, next one is a full power version of that bomb. They were too afraid to test it. Um, and then if you get up here to 8.8, .8, now this 8.8 .8 is the 2010 Chilean quake. And we're, we're getting into some serious power here. Um, if, if you look, Chile had specially built its buildings because they have a history of amazing earthquakes down there. And they have the largest earthquake in recorded history, which was a 9.5 back in the 60s. And uh, and after that devastation, they really took building codes seriously. And so they came out of this 8.8 fairly well. But even if you look at look at uh, uh, the damage damage pictures from that 8.8, .8, they're still just they've uh, they took major damage there. Um, and then all the way up into the sky because the chart keeps spreading out because there's more and more energy per rating. We've got this magnitude 9.1. That's like three times or four times the power of that quake down in Chile. Yet when you go through the earthquake photos, there's no damage anywhere. So that is something to really scratch your head about and say, well, was this earthquake real or not? Or you know, you got a good point there. you got a good point there about bringing up the earthquake in uh, San Francisco where you have, you know, pieces of road falling from the sky, <laughs> you know, because it was... Uh, knocked down roads and did all kinds of stuff, and here we got one that's hugely bigger, and uh, you don't have any damage. Yes, yes, it, it's impossible. It's impossible. A lot of the, a lot of the structures that are in those tsunami videos were built way back, you know, you know, 50, 60 years ago, before they really had the modern codes. And another thing that's really important to know is that this district of Japan, that this earthquake supposedly happened in, has no history of really bad seismic activity. The really bad earthquakes in Japan are all down south in Tokyo, so in, in that region. There, the, the, this, this region that uh, that got this earthquake is just, they're not prepared for it nearly as much as Tokyo, and they still took no damage. Um, so the next link is, uh, um, is, is a collage of, of the different uh, 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 the Different it's, it's screen captures out of various videos where uh, where you can see the tsunami rolling in, and you look through all those and, and you can't see any damage. Even even here, in the very first picture, I chose that one because here we have wood framed houses that are stucco, stucco wood framed houses mostly, predominantly. There's no cracks in the stucco. None of them are knocked out of plumb. None of them lost their balconies or anything. It's just this pretty neighborhood just getting ready to get pounded by the tsunami coming in. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, now, um, I, I, I link um, further down here. If you go to the Japanese newsroom, I've got, I've got the full seismic chart put out by the USGS, but I've got to explain something. You click on the Japanese newsroom. That has in it um, a couple of charts put up by the USGS. And they show that at this Japanese newsroom, this is this is the exact reference station for newsroom. They said that this newsroom pulled 3.1 G's of force during the earthquake. Wow! And Three point. A, a <laughs> dev 
And, and so I've got a link to the video down at the bottom of the page. Man. You can watch what happens. With it, so you can actually watch what happens in the video for real. If you look, if you look at these charts here, it, and my 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 connection is slow. I gotta wait. I don't remember if it's exactly three point one. It's a three point something. Oh, it's a three point two G's at at, at zero point three six seconds into this chart. Anyway, we have here a chart where they said it pulled three point two G's. You know, if you have if you pull 0 0.08 Gs on the ground, or if you pull 1 G on the ground, it's the exact same thing as taking a skyscraper and having it mount vertically to the ground and stick out horizontally and then support its weight. So when, when, if you pull even 0.8 Gs in an earthquake, you're going to have widespread devastation. And yet, at the bottom of this picture... The laser printer is still sitting on the table. It's like, what are you talking about? It should about? have been like a it blunder. Just, I mean, it should look like a blunder hit. Yeah, was yeah, in there. It, it, it's just silly. It is just silly. Wow. The lies that they told are so grave. And, and, and I chose this picture and this newsroom and this video because this, this, is, this ties it down to a fixed location that was, was within a mile of one of, the, one of the stations that the USGS used for, for, for its, uh, to build its charts. It is, it is the one that built this 3.2G chart. And what's worse is that MYG004, where it was the true epicenter, they, they said that at that location the earthquake pulled 12 Gs, which is just ludicrous. Yes. So I, now, you see, I then you've got, you got people who are like fighter pilots and, uh, uh, you know, and, and people who have been in the war, you know, pilots, they all know that, wait a minute, eight, you know, 12 Gs? You know. Well, 12 Gs is so high that if you're, like, leaning up against a rock and that thing thrusts it in you, it'd kill you. Yeah. You'd get killed just from being out in the environment. We're talking to, that, that is that is so far beyond reality. And my original comment was, can you tell me where the mountain range was that got developed by this or did it get swallowed by a volcano? And I, I changed that in, 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 the, in the article to, to geographical changes because you wouldn't exactly get a mountain range from that. You'd certainly get new hills, things like that. We're talking that that's a great, huge, disruptive earthquake. Um, yeah, 12, I'm looking 12, at I'm, I'm twelve looking, G's on the ground is, is unbelievable. Anyway, I'm looking at the pictures you have posted from the other earthquake. Oh, was it the Ko? Uh, the Kobe earthquake. Yeah, that happened in Japan too. I mean, everybody thinks that well, maybe the buildings held up because Japan builds it for earthquakes. Well, yeah, they do build them for earthquakes, but. But, but, you know, if it gets, if the going gets too rough, they're going down. Holy like cow, that is, this is big time, big time difference looking at these pictures on that link. Holy cow. And, 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 and the, and the Bay Quake was only a 6.9. Oh, man, these things are, their buildings are just like. Well, the reason why that happened was because the earthquake You know, typically a, a 6.9 is down as close to the surface, more energy needed there. Well, the trouble then is, is that they're saying that this earthquake, this 9.0, was also a shallow earthquake. So we're talking it should have been tossed around in, in, in Sendai a hundred times as bad as it was in Kobe. No, so, so they're not. They're not. They're saying it was a shallow. Which they're, makes, so they're uh, saying it was a shallow earthquake as well, which is just ludicrous. Because wow. you know they got to get a reason. They got to get a reason for that tsunami. Yeah. <laughs> you, you ain't going to get that, the tsunami that's true. for a really deep earthquake. That's true. <laughs> Everything, all, all the, all the, every, every last thing we have here is rigged for, for, uh, for, uh, uh, you know, just, just based on, based on tsunami data. Okay, now we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get on to uh, get on to the military operation where where uh, where they destroyed the uh, destroyed Fukushima. Um, there were uh, prior prior to this earthquake, um, Japan had offered to enrich uranium for Iran, and and Israel didn't take too kindly to that. At least as far as my as far as I turned up in my investigation, Israel wasn't too happy about. It. So they immediately set up front companies masquerading as security companies, and one of these securities 
um, got access to Fukushima and uh, and basically came in with 1,000-pound cameras that looked just like gun-type nuclear weapons, convinced the plant operators that, uh, that uh, uh, they really were security cameras, got them in there, split, planted Stukes net, and left. That's, that's where we're going with this. Um, and that's why I made mean, very, very clear here that there was that reactor four had been defueled and had the core taken out of it and it exploded anyway. Boy, Which talking about talk about a uh, talking about a smoking gun or the elephant in the room, it's kind of hard to have a nuclear explosion when it's not running. I mean, that's like the yeah. big the big hello, you know, wake up. Yes, yes, it's it's, it's the building. It, it, it is the building seven. Um, Anyway, let's. Uh, I gotta scroll down here. Now it's important. Well, you, actually... you, you said something really quick, uh, and I want to mention that what you're saying is the cameras that they brought in for security, which I'm sure had some kind of camera in it. But when you actually show uh, the breakdown of the nuclear uh, firing device, you know, and it looks exactly like the camera. So that's something we want to go yeah, make sure yeah. we go. If, to. If, if everybody goes down. The link number 32 all the way down on the bottom called Magna BSP's camera. Okay. Click on that. And it's going to pull up two diagrams of gun-type nuclear weapons and Magna BSP's camera. Hmm. So what we have here is, uh, you know, this. if you look on the bottom of this camera, I'm only estimating the weight, and I, and I actually un, am underestimating because because this thing probably actually weighs closer to 5,000 pounds. Um, what the heck your, kind of your, camera is that? <laughs> you know, you know when, when you get people's trust, um, That's true. they'll believe anything. You know, and, and so here's this, here's this company that, that just hates the Arab terrorists, you know, and, 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 and they're just the victims, and so you just trust them, you know, and, and, and I guess it didn't dawn on the Japanese that offering Iran enriched uranium might make a little enemy there. Um, so um, if you look at the bottom of this, this thing is very poorly built, but this is what went into Fukushima. Um, if you look at the bottom here, I mean, it's, it's, it's actually well made, but it's just not, it's not pretty. You know, the newer ones, if you go and you type Magna BSP's uh, camera, uh, they're bi they call them biscopic cameras. If you type it in, you'll see a really, really nice-looking graphical representation of this camera. But to date, this is what they have, what you're seeing here in this picture. And, and so it's a pretty exposed, obvious thing. Um, the whole purpose for the lenses on the bottom and the lenses on the top, what they're saying is when you put the lenses far apart, you can uh, um, get a 3D image at a great distance. So the whole marketing for this thing is you can put it in a, in, in, in a location and then look out for miles, and, and it's going to be able to tell in 3D even at a distance, which is really useful on an airstrip. Um, and so, you know, it makes sense. The trouble is, is that other people are making the same type of camera called a stereoscopic camera. You can do this with just two small cameras that are that are attached to the same pole with distance between them. You don't need this giant thousand-pound thing with a, with a barrel and everything else on it. This this is just nonsense. Um, if you look on the bottom, you can see that the that the metal it, it's designed to be picked up with a forklift or something else. Yeah. It's very very robust on the bottom. There's some weight there. This isn't some little lightweight thing. And, you know, I, I said 1,000 pounds in the article, but, you know, a gun-type nuke usually will go, like, maybe 4,000 pounds. So that's probably closer to what it actually is. And it's kind of hard to get a, get an idea of the scale for this. There, oh, I forgot to link a picture of one of these actually installed. Um, but I'm not going to find that now. Uh, All right, let me ask you stop for a second. I just had a fast blast from somebody, and they said, uh, this is from Neil, he said he was living in Osaka during that Kobe quake. It's about 80 kilometers from Kobe, and during the Kobe quake, uh -huh. we had damage in Osaka that was far away. So what he is saying about the Sendai is right on. So there you go. We have okay. a li listener who actually was in the Kobe quake and okay. saw the Can damage. Can you tell him, uh, please fire me an email at james at jimstonefreelance.com if you have experience in Japan with their earthquakes. I really want to hear from you. Okay. Because well, this, inve this investigation is ongoing. I I'm, not, I'm not stopping this anytime soon. All right, Jim Stone is uh, investigated what really happened at the the reactor at Fukushima. JimStoneFreelance.com is the way to follow along uh, as he's presented a lot of data. Here we have one hour down, one hour to go. 